a museum somewhere in France, there hangs a famous painting which records the story of the little man whom destiny sent down into these dungeons of the buried alive. He was just an unsuccessful family doctor, yet everyone liked him. So when the French Revolution came along, he was given his first government job, head of a public hospital. That hospital was a madhouse, a position no one else would take. Yet Philippe Pinel, failure as a doctor, was going there because inside his small body was a courage like steel. And that walk through the streets of Paris with his pet bird and his poor belongings was leading him to deathless fame. But to reach it, he was going to have to pass through purgatory. <laughs> A few hours later, in the dark caves below La Bicetre, an iron door opened, letting the sunlight blind the eyes of those below who lived in perpetual night. Slowly then, the new superintendent made his way down the stone stairway, handkerchief held to his face to keep off disease. After him, the keepers, not cruel or evil, but simply hired muscle men who sincerely believed that the insane were wild animals to be held in a zoo. Finally, the official of the government, a hard-faced cripple named Couthon, sent to judge whether the new madhouse keeper was tough enough for the job. In all the long years of his life, Pinel would never forget the nightmare of that first inspection. <laughs> Captain George Gaspar, maniac, 35 years in this cell. 35 years in a cage, merciful heavens. A woman, Marie Douce, 31 years. Hector Chevigny, 27 years, dangerous, killed guard in 1791. Seven nights later, Dr. Pinnell took in his hand the one weapon that he would use, a whistle to blow for help only in the event his life were in acute danger. Secondly, a key to the cells where he would go alone to free the tormented captives from fear. Finally, he ordered struck away the manacles of the dangerous maniac who had killed a guard, Hector Chavigny. For 27 years, this living thing had been chained against the wall of this cave. Once Captain Chevigny, officer of the Royal Navy, now mindless, no longer knowing the meaning of the fleur-de-lis branded on his hand when he had been imprisoned a generation before. His arms moved slowly, as if he could not realize that they were now unchained, and then, from the black corridor outside, he heard a voice. You may come out now, officer of France. You must not hurt me. I am alone. The door is open. then, as Pinel stopped and looked back, did he realize that something had saved him. The blinding light of the sun. The sun. The sky. It is beautiful. A moment later, the little doctor and his giant patient were quietly mounting the stairs that led to hope. And with them, there came to an end 2,000 years of darkness.
Thus, in the autumn of 1793, did a humble and modest man discover that love and kindness are the two greatest medicines known to science. And Dr. Pinnell laid down some famous rules. One, hatred and chains have never cured anyone of anything. Two, the mentally sick can be cured. They can be cured. They can be cured. And in the two-year period that followed the arrival of Pinnell, more than a hundred suffering souls went up that stairway from darkness into the outer world of the light and the sky and the stars. And for this miracle, we must, to the name of Philip Pinnell, forever give honor. And for the terrible surprise that nearly destroyed him, we must forever take shame. Pinnell has been turning madmen loose on the streets of Paris. There is no proof that they will not revert to their original state of madness and destroy our citizens in their beds. Quack! Madmen cutting our throats! Dangerous lunatics treated like humans! Stop him! Stop him! Stop him! A gang of street hoodlums laid in wait for him near the asylum and fell upon him to beat him to death. They would have trampled him into the other world had not a giant-like man passing by suddenly called to them. And a moment later, using his heavy walking stick like a battering ram, that stranger plowed into the senseless mob. gates built to hold madmen in served once to hold madmen out. And now occurred the unbelievable incident which Pinnell told about at every lecture he gave in the years that followed, of how he lay gasping for breath, safe in his office, with the giant-like stranger gazing upon him with a strange look of affection, and how as the two men quietly clasped hands, he saw Upon that hand, the fleur-de-lis. For by one of the great coincidences of history, the man who had saved his life was Hector Chevigny, whose mind had been cured by the kindness of Philip Pinnell. This dramatic event made Pinnell world famous, again and again lecturing throughout Europe he carried his message of hope to thousands of medical students. He wrote the first great textbooks on the treatment of mental cases, magazines, and countless articles. And in a little more than a hundred years, we have come from the frightful ignorance that made these the tombs of the living dead to the growing knowledge that led them up that stairway to light, a knowledge that is working wonders today and brings back to happy and normal life people who were once believed to be incurable. All this beginning through the kindness of an unsuccessful family doctor who freed millions from their chains to march with us in the passing parade.